Um, so I've become fascinated with his contributions to uh, uh, libraries and education, especially here in uh, the Bay Area. And I'm working on a book about him, but there's no word on when that will be finished. So <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to share my research so far. Uh, Mr. Halliday's life was crammed with action, uh, invention, and selfless service to the causes that he cared about. Um, I will only be able to touch on some of them. Uh, but by the end of his life in 1900, he had established himself as California's premier wire rope manufacturer. Uh, he was a leader of the state's industrial endeavors and a champion of the region's libraries and um, schools. He was instrumental in the development of the University of California, the San Francisco Public Library, the Mechanics Institute, the San Francisco Art Association, the Lick Observatory, and what is now known as the Lick Wilmerding High School. And those are just the organizations that are still around today. Um, so I'm gonna organize this talk by subject rather than strict chronology. First, I'll talk about Halliday's youth and the development of his wire rope business, and then I'll discuss his role with the Mechanics Institute and the San Francisco Public Library and the University of California, and then I'll talk about his portrait. And then, if we're still friends, I'll be able to take your questions. All right, so the father of San Francisco's cable cars was born Andrew Halliday Smith on March 16th, 1834. He was the sixth child of civil engineer Andrew Smith and Julianne Johnstone, and he was born in London near Leicester Square in a building that served double duty as home and also uh, a factory for his father's um, business. He was named for Sir Andrew Halliday, who was a kinsman of the family. Uh, Dr. Halliday was a physician who studied at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, he was involved in the Napoleonic Wars, serving as a doctor. Um, and I think his last tour was uh, in the Battle of Waterloo. He was a surgeon for the British Army. Uh, he also helped establish King's College in London and was the royal physician to William IV and Queen Victoria. His connection to the Smith family I haven't quite figured out, um, but it must have been very strong because the Smiths would name two of their children after him. Now Halliday's father, Andrew Smith, was born in Dumfries, uh, Scotland in 1799. He came to London in his youth and quickly made a name for himself as an engineer, taking out scores of patents for a variety of technologies, including windows and doors, uh, propelling mechanisms, steam generators, a suspension bridge, and even a machine gun. Most importantly, though, he was the first person to, uh, in the English-speaking world to patent the concept of wire rope. And his first patent was um, taken out in January 1835, when Halliday, his son, was barely a year. Uh, several more patents followed, and this started a line of work that the Smith family would pursue in uh, London and also in California for the next 60 years. <clears throat> Smith was heavily involved in the local scientific community that blossomed in London. He was a member of the local mechanics institutes as well as the Royal Institution and the Royal Society of Arts. And he was in regular contact with the most exalted names in science of the day, uh, including Marie Ampere, uh, John Walker, uh, James Marsh, and uh, Michael Faraday. Um, unfortunately, since wire rope was a hot technology and several other people were playing around with it at the same time, uh, that uh, environment bred some very wicked patent lawsuits and an eventual bankruptcy for Andrew Smith in 1849. Luckily, by the time the bankruptcy hearings were over, 
Smith had already lined up another career as engineer for Colonel John Charles Fremont uh, at his estate in Mariposa, California. Uh, in order to sweeten the deal, Colonel Fremont granted Andrew Smith a land, an unmarked land grant um, so he could pursue mining as well. So Andrew Smith, being the uh, entrepreneurial sort, started up a joint stock company called the Golden Mountain Mining Company of Mariposa and headed out to California with his oldest son and his middle son, uh, namesake Andrew. And they left in February of 1852. After a rough passage across the ocean on the steamship Pacific and a harrowing trip across the Isthmus of Panama, they would arrive in San Francisco on May 24th, 1852. And there's how San Francisco looked when they arrived. They didn't stay long though. They quickly left for Mariposa um, and once they got there, it was immediately clear that there was no land set aside for them, and uh, as had been promised by Colonel Fremont. And uh, to make matters worse, Fremont's title to the land was in jeopardy, and so uh, things were disappointing for the Smith family. Uh, but to make the best of the situation, Smith took on a couple of small engineering jobs for other mining companies. Uh, but ultimately went back to England in 1854, uh, hoping to pursue some inventions that he was cooking up related to mining. Uh, and he left his young son, Andrew, to fend for himself. <laughs> um, young Andrew at this time, for private reasons, would change his name from Andrew Hallady Smith to Andrew Smith Hallady. Uh, though it would not officially be recorded with the state until 1864. Now, our Andrew had a lot of adventures with mining, but eventually figured out that the utilization of his engineering skills was more lucrative than panning for gold or cradling or even tunneling. So Andrew spent a great deal of time on the middle fork of the American River, and as you can see, it was very crowded. <laughs> um, in the summer of 1856, he found himself working for a quartz mill, uh, constructing a ditch which would move water to power the mill. The quartz seam itself was 1,100 feet above, above the mill on a hillside, and there was a track that was used to bring cars down, uh, full of ore, down to the mill. The loaded car that was descending would at the same time bring up an empty car uh, by means of a manila rope. So manila is that fiber rope that we're all so used to. Um, the rope itself was about 1,200 feet long, so it was a big rope way up on the hillside. As the rope typically only